Hi there, welcome back. Today we're going to go through the next 10 sections of Free Code Camps. We're learning HTML by building a cat photo app. So we're on section or part 31 now, um, and here's our page so far. If I just bring that over, we can see what we've got here. A couple of headings, um, different bits of text, images, which are links, um, and some list items as well now. So we're starting to build out the page. So step 31, the strong element is used to indicate that some text is of strong importance or urgent. Um, in the fig caption we just added, indicate that hate is of strong by wrapping it in a strong element. So this one is just strong like that. And then around the other side, we want to, as always, close off uh, that strong tag. If I scroll down here, we can see that hate here um, is, is set, it's effectively bolded um, and it's given some, some importance. So cool, submit to next. 32, um, it's time to add a new section. So we're gonna add a third section below the second section element. Um, so that will be down here. So we'll do new section. And like we've done before, close that section off like that. And just here, I'm gonna make sure it's nicely lined up. Cool, so inside the third section, we need to add a H2 and like that closing off the h2 and this one will be cat form like so and we should be able to see that rendering on the page there there's our new h2 cool uh, 34 if we now we're going to add a web form to collect information from our users so after cat form we add a form element so all forms um, are sort of contained within this form um, HTML element here, as you can see, and we'll be building that out. So there we go. 35, so the action attributes indicate where form data should be sent. So for example, this form is sub sent, the, the data itself is sent to submit dash URL forward slash. So, um, and it basically yeah, tells the browser that the path to send the data is forward slash submit URL. So we want to add an action with this URL to our form. So let's do that. So action equals, and it's the string, it's that one. And obviously that doesn't change anything sort of in the front end. It's more when you eventually submit that form. That's what the end point where it will be, it will be hitting. So the input element allows you several ways to collect data from a web form, like image elements, input elements are self-closing and don't need closing tags. Sorry, so let's nest an input and it's self-closing like that. And that's inside of the form. And just for sort of clarity, I'm going to indent it slightly there with the tab. Perfect. It's 37. So there's, there are many kinds of inputs you can use. Um, and essentially they're denoted with the type attribute. So on this input, for example, if I put type, we can um, have that as text. And essentially it just lets the browser know that in this form, it's accepting text like that. Um, obviously it will accept numbers and, and, and other things, um, but this one is just text. And that, that's what we want is the, the type of, for the input. Excellent, so 38, in order to for a form's data to be accessed by the location specified in the action attributes. So if you remember, that was the URL. Um, you must give the text field a, a name attribute and assign it a value to represent the data being submitted. So for example, we're gonna add the name attribute and this is cat photo um, URL um, in this example here. So that's the name that's assigned to this input. So whatever's inputted on the browser, um, it will be given sort of this name or so we can find it via the name basically. So 39, placeholder text is used to give people a hint about what kind of information to enter. So you can obviously imagine if you've got a number of different input boxes and there's no labels above, um, a placeholder is the, the text inside the form that's kind of grayed out um, by default. And then you can obviously style it however you want. But let me just do placeholder and just I'll do test here as an example, and we should be able to see test inside our form here. Then you can see as I click onto it, 
and start typing that overrides the placeholder and we get obviously we're typing in the value at that point so we want cat photo url like that and that is our placeholder text and then step 40 so to prevent a user from submitting a form when required information is missing we just add to the required attribute um, and this doesn't need uh, sort of any value it's basically a, almost a boolean so if required is there it is required um, and we'll, we'll get that sort of syntax um, when we go to submit the form if that input is empty basically cool so let's submit and just check that's all good there we go perfect so i hope that you found that helpful uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one thank you